This problem's a little bit interesting. I am asking not for an antiderivative, I am asking for the antiderivative of this function, but I'm asking for the antiderivative that has this property that, that the big F of zero is equal to two. Now, the idea here is this. If we think about the general antiderivative of this little f, it's gonna be some function big F plus an arbitrary constant. So there's a whole infinite family of different antiderivatives depending on what the value of the constant is. But by plugging in this number, for one of the values of c, you're going to have it that when you plug in zero, it's going to be equal to two. In other words, this, this claim about the f of zero is equal to two is basically going to tell us what that c value has to be. So let's try to figure out what the general antiderivative is first, and then we'll try to evaluate the c. So I need to come along here and, and figure out what my f of x is going to be, my capital F of x, my antiderivative of a little lowercase f of x. Now, I know the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So the antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x, just the same. So this is, first part's gonna be a little bit easy, that's just gonna be e to the x. And then, oh my goodness, what's going on? One over square root of one minus x squared. Now, this is mainly a question of being able to recognize something. Indeed, you might recall that the derivative of arc sine is exactly this expression. In other words, one over the square root of one minus x squared is exactly the derivative of arc sine. And therefore, the antiderivative of this thing is just going to be arc sine as well. So this is e to the x plus arc sine of x. And then finally, for the general antiderivative, I'm going to come along and add in that plus c that we have not yet determined. So now it comes time to determine that. All right, so let's go. I want f of zero to be equal to the value of two, right? That's my claim. I want this to be equal to two. But what is f of zero? Well, e to the zero plus arc sine also of zero plus c. Okay, I can probably evaluate that. e to the zero is just one. What about arc sine of zero? Well, I know that sine of zero is zero. So therefore, arc sine of zero is also gonna be zero. So this is gonna be one plus zero plus c. And so I have this, this one plus c on the right hand side. I want it to equal to two. So I need to have one plus something is two. I need that c to be the value of one. In other words, we're saying that the c is going to be equal to one. And so that is the antiderivative, e to the x plus r sine of x plus c equal to one will give me something that is both an antiderivative and has this property that f of zero is equal to two. Now, this is symmetry between derivatives and antiderivatives where there's sort of the unspecified constant c and the antiderivative is actually incredibly important. For example, you know that velocity is the derivative of distance. So if I told you exactly what my velocity was at every single point in time, I had this wonderful velocity function prescribed to you, you might reasonably ask, what is the distance? But to get from velocity to a distance, you have to go the other way around. You have to find an antiderivative. And so you might have this lovely distance function, but there's gonna be a plus C in there. You do not know where to start. So I can't tell you how far you are away from me just by knowing what your velocity has been all along. Because I also have to know where it was that you started. How far did you initially start from me in order for me to figure out how much, how far you eventually ended up to me. So this asymmetry is going to be incredibly important in a large number of our applications.